Yeah, um, I mean, I think, you know, I want to actually respond first of all to the thing that Wendy said, because I, because I think that's a, I think it's an extremely accurate picture of what's happening in a lot of, in a lot of places, both in the relationship between the old left and what's happening in the students, and about the radicalisation of the students. You know, I mean, if you think about how those, those demonstrations, and particularly ones of the school students, are kicked off, and the, the, degree, the, the degree to which they are unorganised, and really it has to come from that. It, it must look like that in microcosm if it looks like this in macrocosm. That must be what's, what's going on. But I think you're absolutely right, and other people make the same point. That's the beginning of a process. I mean, th this has happened so many times in history. You know, when, uh, when the Leavers organised what they called the apron youths, the apprentices of London, who were exactly these kind of kids, kicked off like this, in outside the doors of Parliament, forced the MPs to have to leave the House of Parliament by the river because they couldn't get out any other any other way. If you think about, if you think that we've got a problem with the sort of starting point, if you like, of you know kids in Hackney, think what it's like if you're a Russian peasant. You know, you were starting with a very very low political culture, and they made a revolution. So this is a this is the beginning of a process. It's not the end of the process. And think what we've got to think through is how exactly as you say we get more people who actually go more lecturers who actually go on the demonstration you know that it's it's that simple you're there and you're in and you're talking to them you're not there you're not in and you're just passively admiring them or condemning them or who cares what you think of them really you're not in that structure you're not in that room with them and i also think the thing about twinning is a good idea we had the idea at the beginning we never really actioned it of, of twinning with the, the you know the colleges getting down there. and i think it'd be great if if Faisy or James or somebody went down to Hackney College and said, you know, we're from the SOAS occupation, this is what we're doing, let's get that interaction going. Let's have the open day. Let's have a thing where we go to the people at Hackney College and say, this is your only chance to go to college for free. We're opening up the college, we'll take you on a tour. And I think that would be a brilliant thing because, you know, I came from a working class package. I know what it was like. The first time I went to go, you know, when you go after the open days, when you go and supposedly choose what university you want to go to, or actually they choose whether or not you're going to get in. Actually, just physically walking into a university building, if you're from a working class family, that is an intimidating thing to do. It's a frightening, scary, unreal place to, to be. I, I, I actually think it will enhance the life chances of the kids. They might have developed them politically <laughs> if we actually got someone to come through the door with some of the occupiers and just show them around. Even went after the occupation, just show them around and talk to them, book a room and have a chat with them. You know, that's what that's practically what it that that is practically what it means to deliver a solidarity between lecturers and the students on the one hand, and the university students and the others on the and that's how we'll strengthen it. And that will feed through. If that relationship builds, it will be a politicising relationship, and it means the next time there's a huge demonstration, it will be, because of that, more political and more focused, and more disciplined, and therefore more effective than some of the ones that, that some of the ones have to be. And we have to think very, you know, clearly about that. And as I said, we've got a very we've got, the core is a very powerful tool here because it is an organised existing national link with the with the left and with workers. And the demonstration in mid-February and the TUC demonstration, they're very important points that we pull those, uh, those, those people into. And I just say, really, the enemies here are, the enemies here are working with generalisations and working with hyperbole. Because you don't put things clearly, and, and that's why I'm talking about your to put it absolutely clearly and concretely about what needs, uh, needs to be done. Anybody, you know, when I came into politics, one of the first things I was told is the argument for socialism you can make in two minutes. What do you need to know? That capitalism is an exploitive society driven by profit, that we've got the capacity to run it ourselves, we have to smash the state to get there. That's it. That's all there is to the argument for socialism. That's not the difficult bit. The difficult bit is how do you actually make the next step and the step after that and the step after that. Those are the, those are the, 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 the difficult questions. And to be able to do that, you have to be ruthlessly honest about what's happening around you. The other thing I would tell you, I, I remember this from, from Tony Cliff when a member then the SWP came to Roger Cox, who was an engineering worker, and he said to Cliff, I've, I've been elected the president of Hackney Trades Council and I represent 20,000 workers. And Cliff said to him, that's marvellous, Roger. How many people were in the room when you were elected? He said, 10. So Cliff said, and how many people voted for you, Roger? And he said, seven. He said, Roger, you represent seven workers, not 20,000 workers. And that, that kind of ruthless 
humility about what we've actually done, what the forces are around us, and what the next step and the, in the argument is, is absolutely key. And the generalisations are important. You can never locate yourself without generalisations. If you don't know the capitalist state's a bad thing, you're going to be awfully surprised by the last few days. If you did think it was a bad thing, and it would you force to defend the privileged orders, well maybe, you know, I mean, the exact things that happen are always surprising, but the fact that they happen isn't really surprising. They're important, but then you move on. Then the hard work really, really begins. And on that one, just come to the question you asked about what next. Now, you know, uh, I thought I'd sort of break with the tradition on the left and actually address the, the question that was the title of the meeting, which was how can we break the condemned government. So that's what I, what I thought about. But you're absolutely right. Of course, breaking the government is in one way only a beginning uh, as well. And we certainly don't want to perpetuate the cycle of lousy Tory government broken, followed by lousy Labour government broken, followed by lousy coalition government broken. You know, that is, you know, it's a kind of, you know, it's a, it's a demeaning and demoralising prospect that every generation will have to fight exactly the same battles as the, as the last one. We want a different society. We want a society where these struggles aren't constantly recurring, where we don't have to reclaim the same rights, fight the same battles, fight the same excesses of exploitation, but want an end to it. But the question is, how do you get there again? And if we break this government, that is a very big step on, on, that, on that direction. What would have to happen for that, and that's by no means achieved, but for that to move forward, is first of all that there are a large number of people who are actually convinced that there should be a completely alternative system. And to be honest, that's what counterparts about. It's about making sure that the struggles of today are successful, but within the struggles of today, there's a larger minority of people who say, look, actually, we don't just need to win today, we need to win once <coughs> more for working people. And you have to build a larger and larger minority within the struggles of today that believe that have a possibility of transforming the, 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 the system in the end of the day. And that will have many, there are many links in that chain still, one of which, as Joseph was saying, may well be that we form a, a, a left, a broad left, Party. I mean, Tara Galli raised this with Lindsay and I in discussion the other day. So what we really need is a sort of broad left alternative uh, to Labour as a kind of start, as a kind of starting point. And actually, I agree with that. But I think that we're. Let me put it this way: Imagine that we do get it right, and imagine there is an absolutely huge, say, there's you know, quarter of a million people on the streets on the 26th of March. Now that will create a kind of basis in the movement of radicalised people who will begin to say we need political representation at the next election. You know, we tried Labour, it fucked up look at the war. In disgust at Labour, some people thought the Liberals would work. That quite fucked up in seconds. So uh, maybe there is another alternative that we have to build ourselves. But to have the basis for that, we've got to get some forces actually arrayed, I think, first of all, in the protest movement. This is you know, what, we did, what, what happened really to stop the war was we got an electoral turret back. But actually, within its limits, a fairly successful one before it fell to, fell to bits. But you have to have a, a mass presence of opposition before you can build a, a, a mass platform for electoral activity. And we don't have that at the moment. If we call the party now, I'll tell you what we get. We get the old left assembled in a room arguing with each other, and I can't imagine a worse place to be. <laughs> so, first of all, I'd like at least to have a demonstration of workers on the scale and the impact of the student demonstrations, and then we can talk about it. it's getting the links of the chain in the in the right order, which I think is the key the key thing. I, th I don't I don't know about the, the the effect of Christmas. You know, I don't know. I don't. I, I, that's what I said at the beginning. I don't think anybody can exactly tell what the movie is going to be, and there's only one way to do it, and that is that we'll try after Christmas. I think we should try and get. The National Assembly. And I think we should try and spark a nationwide wave of occupations. And at some point, and my view is not, as some people are talking about, on the 29th of January. I think that's way too quick at the beginning, uh, at the beginning of term. I think it would be better if we're coordinated with the core demonstration in London that we're talking about, because that would be a practical place where the next big student demonstration would also be the next big general anti cuts demonstration as well. That would be a good place to be. I don't know if we can win these things, but I think that would be the, the, the maximum part. But, you know, it's like that story about Lenin in the middle of 19, uh, in 1917, when there was been a period of reaction, he was in hiding, he didn't know whether the revolution was going to take another step forward or whether it'd be decisively set back. And the story goes that you know, he was in hiding, hiding in a, in, with, a, with a worker, and it was only when at the lunch table, the worker broke the bread and said, you know, we still get good bread. They aren't confident enough to take that away from us. 
that Lenin thought, okay, the confidence is still there among the movement, there will still be another move forward. Now, I don't know what the equivalent of that's going to be. Probably next meeting we have some people come forward from the students and say, look, you know, they're bragging that the pot noodle's cheaper now and so forth and so on. I don't know what that movement's going to be. But, um, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll wait, we'll, we'll call something and we'll see what it's like. And there's only one way of ever testing this, is that you, you, you formulate your best option about what you think should happen, you try to put it into action, and you assess the, the, the results afterwards. You know, we had a counter farming, I think it was a very important counter farming, where we said we need a nationwide wave of occupations, we need so as to have a big occupation, we need that to be a spark there. And you know, I've rarely seen a plan actually go into operation with so few uh, amendations in, in practice as we did as we did then. We'll try that again, and that is the only serious method that any uh, you know, vital organisation has. It assesses the situation, formulates some tactics, it attempts to implement them, it assesses their uh, strengths or weakness uh, after the event, and that's just about what we're going to be doing, and I think this has been a very, very good discussion about that. The only thing I'd say about it is, we simply aren't big enough yet. If there had been, if when we'd had that first discussion, if there had been representatives, not just of SOAS and a couple of other colleges, UCL and whatnot, if there had been 10 colleges in the room, we would be a hell of a lot further down the road. You know, Two or three more counterfire members isn't just you know one or two percent greater in the struggle. Two or three more counterfire members is 20, 30 percent stronger when it interacts <coughs> in the correct way with the struggle. So all I'd say to you, please, if you're not a member of the organization, you should be. And not for us, but for you. It strengthens you. It's about what you can do. You know, people say you know joining left-wing organizations it diminishes your you know power as an individual. Actually, that's the reverse of the truth. It enhances your ability to operate politically as an individual. So uh, for you, as much as for us, please become a member if you're not.